talking to you. Have you checked out our skits channel? Well, if you haven't, you need to check it out. Terrell fixes all skits. And there's your dinner. Pterodactyl here. Today's video, we're going to give you a shop update again. Because, you know, this is taking a long time to get this shop done. So come on, follow me. We're going to go into the new shop. Come on, follow me. Not on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Just into the new shop. So here we are in the breezeway. This is the breezeway. And see... I don't know if I mentioned this in the first one because we've done a couple of these, but I got this nice skylight in here. This is nice when you walk through here, the natural light. You know, and we got the pegboard and stuff on each side that I did. But we're mainly going to talk today about all the electrical that I did. I did it myself. I didn't hire an electrician. I'm the electrician. Isn't that scary? probably thinking, that place is going to burn down if you do the electrical channel. Now I know what I'm doing. I was an electrician for a while. <laughs> Not a magician, an electrician. So here's my bank of switches that I labeled. Shop, main bay, neons, and the loft. And then here's my fan so I can control my fans. Not you. I can't control you guys. Not those fans. I can't control those kind of fans. But those 72-inch fans that I installed. And then a couple of outlets. So first we're going to energize the shop area. And Mr. Cameraman is going to catch all these lights going on. Whee! Check that out. Check out all those lights. They're LED. They look like fluorescent lights, but they're LEDs that were fluorescent lights. Well, some of them that I converted to LED, and we're going to talk about that. But there's uh, 12, 12 eight-footers up here. And there's going to be a little discussion about why I went this route. Because I know some of you are going, you could have bought those LEDs that link together. See, there's even one right here, a little four-footer that I, I put in, wired it in to the other ones. So, I've got these, which look like traditional fluorescent lights, and I'm going to tell you the reason why I went this way, and I didn't buy those ones like those that you can link together. One of the reasons I didn't buy those is because I was afraid that if I bought a bunch of them and linked them together, and for some reason they burned out over time, say a couple years from now, and then I had to replace them, what if I couldn't get the same one? And then I would have a bunch of mismatched lights, and I didn't want that. Because a lot of those that you buy like that, if they burn out, you cannot replace the bulb. You have to buy the whole light again. You know, what if, what if we're doing something under here and we, we pick something up that's, you know, taller than eight feet, which is what this is, and we smash one of the lights? Oh, now we got to replace the light. I know one of the solutions would be to buy a bunch of extra lights and have them just in case something like that happens, but I didn't want to do that. The number two reason I wanted to use these is because I could use the fixture itself as conduit. See how I just ran one piece of conduit to here and then a piece of conduit over to the next one. And then I could run wires through the light fixture and use it as conduit so when I wanted to put my uh, outlets in because here's extra outlets that I put on these posts, these support beams that support the loft. And these are 20 amp outlets. I ran 20 amp number 12 wire to all the outlets in the shop because I want to make sure I got 20 amp power. So that way I could use it. And then these lights are on a 15 amp breaker. 
So I, I split up all the breakers. And another thing I did is the outlets that are on, say, the right side throughout the shop are on their own breaker. And these outlets on the left side are on another breaker. And if you know anything about electric, you, don't not, you do not want to put more than 10 outlets on a circuit. So that's what I did. So throughout the whole shop, one half is on one breaker, the other half's on another breaker, and then no more than 10 outlets on each breaker. Does that make sense to you? So if you plug something in here and say and it, it, it shorts out, these are still live. And of course, I labeled, meticulously labeled the junction box or the, the main 100 amp electrical panel that I installed that way. Because you don't want to, you know, just take this apart and, and just assume when you killed the power that these are all killed. No, you have to kill the separate breakers to each one. So that's another reason I wanted to use these. So I could run wire through it and give it a cleaner look. You can't do that with those linkable lights. So maybe one of you grass rats out there is working on a building or building a building and you want to, you know, some ideas on, on lighting. That's why I went with this. And again, they're all LED. So six of these fixtures, because I got 12, six of these eight footers I had gotten for free from a friend of mine. That, and, and they were fluorescent and they had ballast in them. Well, if you know anything about fluorescent lighting, the one thing that goes bad most of the time is the ballast. So these are non-ballast LEDs. So what I did is he gave me six of these fixtures. I gutted them. I took all the ballasts out. I took all the wiring out. I rewired them so I could put these LED bulbs in. So let's go over here and we're going to talk about these bulbs. So I bought these bulbs from a place called Green Light Depot. And these are glass. These are glass LED bulbs. They're 18 watt. They're 5,000 lumens. As it says on here, five, or 5,000 K. 18 watt. And I, I bought them in a, uh, a box of 25. They come in a box of 25. So I bought two boxes of 25, and then I bought some additional bulbs just to have, just in case we break them, because like I said, they are glass. And they're real easy to install. So here, they give you this. They give you this with it, and it shows you how to wire them. So let me put my spectacles on so I can show you that I did the uh, non-ballast. See, now they got, they do sell these with a ballast, where you can use a ballast, but I used a non-ballast. No ballast. And another thing to remember when you install them, only one end of these you need electricity to. And that's the end with the sticker on it. And there's your neutral. And there's your line. So that's all you have to remember. So what I did is when I did a lot of these, what I did was I just put a little black mark on there so I knew that this was the end that had the power going to it because the other end is dead there's no power to the other end the other end just serves as a you know to hold the bulb in place so if I took this bulb out and spun it around and put this sticker end on the other end the light the bulb wouldn't light up so that's what I did so I only had six of them fixtures that that friend of mine gave me so I had to buy six more so I went on the inner screen and I bought six more, which were just LED ready eight foot fixtures. And that's what these are. These are the, the LED ready ones that I bought. See, they look identical to the ones that that friend of mine gave me. 
But they were all ready to go. And they were already marked, as you can see under here, L for line, N for neutral. So all I had to do was put them up, wire them in, and put the bulbs in. And they all lit up. So those are the reasons why I went that route and I didn't use those linkable ones. Especially over here. Because I had to go around this door with the electric. So that way, like behind here, there's, a, there's four outlets. See, I just simply came off of the light fixture. I just drilled a hole in it with a hole, one of them step bits. Put a conduit fitting in there. So I'm using the uh, fixture as a chase to run the wiring through. And that way I was able to jump across here, come out, go down, put a bank of outlets, and then from there I was able to run around. So I got plenty of outlets. And again, I put a 100 amp service in this new addition. So I got plenty of electricity. Tea. Yeah. And there's plenty of light under here. Nice and bright, ain't it? It's a lot brighter than the other shop. So another thing we did is I put this steel workbench in here. Isn't that a nice bench? Three-eighths thick plate steel. Had to use a fork truck to get this in here. But this uh, bench didn't look like this when I got it. And I got it for, you know how much I paid for that bench? Nada. Zero. Got it for free from a friend of mine. The same friend of mine that gave me that spiral staircase. He said they were going to scrap this bench. You want it? Otherwise, we're scrapping it. I said, yeah, I'll take it. He goes, I'll even drop it off. So I sanded it all down and I painted it. Smoke gray. And then I added another outlet box here, which is tapped into these outlets here, which these are outlets that are from the old building. From when I knocked the hole in the wall, there were outlets on that wall we had to eliminate. So instead of eliminating them, I just brought them over here. Isn't this a nice bench? Nice, sturdy steel bench. And this, this here, this was in the old building. Look. Look at this picture of Blade Man and Throttle. I love them guys. They're the greatest. This is the hole right here where Blade Man and Throttle are standing. That's where we punch into the new building. They're standing to the entrance to the new building. And there's that, that little cabinet there. See it right there? And there's the old workbench that was on that wall. And we're going to talk about that in a minute too. So it fit perfect in here. So I painted that too. It looks like it goes with it. It's a nice bench. Everybody that comes to the shop, they always, wow, that's nice. That's a nice bench. So I've been going through stuff. I put these up here, Harbor Freight, those little magnetic holders. Had a couple of them. This is nice. They're right at eye level. I could see all these bits. So I'm going to get a couple more of these, and I'm going to go all the way down with them. Then I'm going to hang some tools up there. A lot of common tools I use, you know, like pliers and cutters and stuff, and I'll stick them to that. And then I got all my, my little battery charging station here. Got all my battery chargers, which were in the other room. So I mounted a power strip to the back of it and plugged it into that other outlet. 
And then when the batteries are charged, we just stick them up here as we need them. So that worked out great. Got my screwdrivers over here that we had gotten from a tarot fan years ago. Got this little cart we got from a tarot fan. Got that hanging on the side. Fire extinguisher. Broom. My brother, Farrell, had a couple of these fans. He was going to throw them away. He goes, you want them? Otherwise, I'm throwing them away. I said, yeah, I'll take them. Wired that in. In case we need to move some air in here, so you know, gets hot in the summer. And then got my torches, tanks over there, my little bandsaw, which is on wheels. I can wheel out a couple of tables. So this little breezeway comes in handy. And then I brought in my uh, toolbox, which I've had forever. Brought this in from the other room, stuck it over here. I'm still going through this, organizing this, cleaning it out, getting rid of stuff, adding stuff. Added this little area here from a piece of pegboard that was laying, laying around. Using that to hold these. I had a bunch of these. I had a box of tools. I went through it and I thought, you know what, I can put those right there. I don't know if I ever talked about these cabinets. These are nice cabinets. I got these at an auction. You know how expensive these cabinets are? I got these for $75 a piece. That's with taxes and the fees they charge at the auction. I paid about $74 a piece for these. I got two of them. You know what I like about these? This, these, these doors. You can put all those spray cans and stuff in there. Oh, see, you got snake oils in there. It even says snake oils. <laughs> so we're organizing underneath. This is the shop area. This is where we're going to work on stuff. This was the original table. This was the very first thing I built before we started doing all the upgrades or finishing the inside of the building. So Donnie, you know Donnie, our character Donnie. We're always borrowing Grandma's trailer. You gonna borrow Grandma's trailer, Carol? Oh, hey Donnie. All right, hey guys. guys. Tell Grandma thank you for letting us borrow her camper. Yeah. Oh, well, Grandma don't know we took it. She don't? No, she's sleeping right now. But when she wakes up, she's gonna know we took the camper. Oh, I doubled up on her pain meds. He was moving. And he was getting rid of a bunch of stuff, so he said, come on over to Grandma's house, we're moving, we got a bunch of stuff, you can have it. So they had this top, it was on like a snack bar. So I said, yeah, I could use that. So I took some two by, two by fours and some four by fours, and I built this table. You may have seen it in the background of some of the other videos. And this is the table we built as we were finishing the inside of the building, because you gotta have a table to work off of. So when we got done doing the inside of the building, I painted, painted it all, and we moved it over here, and we're going to use it as a bench. Now, eventually, I'll probably hang some stuff up here yet, probably some pegboard, because I got some wood in here. If I measure from here up two feet, there's another girder going through there. So if I need some pegboard, I can secure it up to there. I got some wood back there I can drill to. Here's something else I made. I bought this set of conveyor here at an auction. I think I paid 25 bucks for it. And then I took some two by 12s and put them together and put wheels on it so I could move this thing around. And I got all my saws stored underneath there. And I got it set up so I could take unplug this, take this saw off, 
grab another one, throw it up here, and it lines up perfectly with these rollers. So like if I need to cut some lumber, I can throw it up here, it's even with it. I could take this off. I can grab that metal chop saw that's on the end, throw it up here. If I got some angle iron or something I need to cut, I can throw it right up here. That way I'm not working on the floor like an animal. And then if it's in my way, I can roll it around. It's got locking wheels on it. 25 bucks with this. And then this was some scrap steel I had laying around where I added all this on. Arbor press that a customer had given me. I got this for free with the stand. Big Arbor press. free with the stand all I did was paint the stand that'll come in handy so some of this stuff may get moved around this this end of the shop area because we're gonna get a blast cabinet I'm gonna get a big blast cabinet so we can put stuff in there to sandblast we're gonna get a lift like a motorcycle lift we're gonna put in here it's somewhere maybe two I know I thought this building was big, 40 by 50. You think, oh wow, 40 by 50, that's big. Yeah, once you start filling it up and closing it in, it's not as big as you think. And then of course, the switch for the neons. All the neons are on a switch. So that way, I don't have to go around and turn everything on. They're all wired in. And then my stoplight, it's got, you know, a controller in there, which I can adjust to make it do different stuff. So I got that stoplight set to just do that. And come in here, Mr. Cameraman. I even got this neon. This is the one that we made, me and Doc Neon made. When we went and visited him. To light it up, there we go. And uh, it can be, you can get your block out paint and touch up the little places that don't, uh, didn't. Yeah, because you got to put, sometimes you got to put two coats on yeah, there, Yeah, right? yeah, because you don't, you can't see it when you're doing it, especially on clear, when it's not lit up. So when you light it up, you can touch it up. So there it is, T period, D period. T period, D period, pterodactyl. Isn't that amazing? I even got that wired into that same circuit. So even in this hallway, you know, I can turn the shop lights off. If I want just that ambiance of all the neons, isn't that cool? And those beer signs, come out here. Come out here, Mr. Cameraman. Doc also made that custom neon for Junior for his Schwinn bikes. And I got another Stroh's hanging light over there. All on that same circuit. All on that neon circuit. The only problem is this one that Doc Neon made me doesn't always turn on. So I have to come over here every once in a while and switch that one on. That's the only one. But check it out. Pretty neat, huh? My signs, let's talk about my signs. I didn't want to put any holes in the metal. I don't want to put a bunch of screws and holes and everything in the metal. Magnets, Harbor Freight. I glued a bunch of magnets on there. You know what I glued them on there with? Our HV350, which we sell in our online store. Go to Harbor Freight and get these magnets.
And then look, I even got them marked. This came from a fan, a fan, Carol fan, Mark Ogle. From Mooresville, Indiana. He gave it to me when we were in Portland. Hi, Mark. So what happens is, get some grinding dust, we'll stick to those magnets. You can see the magnets back there. So that way, if I want to move a sign, I can just take it down and move it. They're all held on with magnets. Just the road signs. Even this big giant sign here. This big stoplight sign. That's got four three-inch round magnets. Also, I got from Harbor Freight. I just had to take a block of wood. I took a hole saw and cut a, a three-inch circle with a hole saw because I had to space it out for the ribs here. So I used that piece of wood as a spacer and then bolted it through the sign there. Same with some of the heavier signs. Slippery when wet, it's got some big three inch diameter magnets on it. But most of the other signs just have those little three quarter inch, those little square magnets. You can look them up at Harbor Freight, they got them there. All these held on with magnets. Everything's held on with magnets. So that way I don't have to drill a bunch of holes in there. And then as before in the other video, I got the UFO lights up there. My 72 inch ceiling fans. Junior's got his bikes hanging up there. Let me turn the lights on up in the loft. Those recessed lights, LED in the loft area. Again, got those lights, those LED recessed lights for free. Carol fan and friend, Mighty, found a case of them in the garbage. He was driving down the road, because a lot of places out here, they don't have alleys, so they garbage day to the Garbage is by the road. He stopped and saw this box, cardboard box, sitting by the garbage and looked. Twelve brand new, never used or open LED recessed lights. He goes, here, Carol, maybe you can use them in your new building. Sure enough, put them up there in the loft area. Junior's got his bikes hanging up there. Don't that look cool? That looks awesome. And then we got our lift, our elevator to get everything up there. I painted two lines on the floor. So we know exactly where to put this thing every time. It'll land in the same spot. We just roll it over here if we need to use it for something else. And then when we go up, we want to know what height we're at. We just line up these two marks. That way we're right at the right height. Just in case we have a bunch of motorcycles or mini bikes or something on there and you can't ride up with the elevator, you need to take the stairs because there's not enough room. You'll know exactly where you need to be right from the ground. Isn't that cool? And then there's our gate, that gate I built. We'll go upstairs and take a look at that. I love this spiral staircase. This thing is awesome. If I want to pop up there real quick and grab some parts or something that's up there and I can zip right down, I have to use that elevator. Come on, come with me.
Here's one of those other cabinets I got. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, when I bought these at the auction, they were full. They were full of stuff, all kinds of good stuff. $75 a piece. There's a lot of stuff that I kept, a lot of stuff I threw away. So here we are in the loft. Recessed lights fit perfect between these ribs. So I got no lights hanging down. We got plenty of light up here. So we use this for storage. We got all kinds of stuff. And there's still a lot of room up here. And we got a lot of crap up here. Then we got our access to the attic. And I even got outlets and lights up here. And there's a four, there's a four foot wide catwalk that runs all the way down the center of this. So I even got more storage up here. So I had those, uh, those construction lights that we were using for temporary lighting as we were finishing the inside of the building. So I took one string of them lights and ran them down the center and I wired it into this box. And it's also wired into these loft lights. So if I accidentally leave this on, if I turn those loft lights off, these lights in the attic will go off too. So that way I'm not burning lights because, you know, who knows how often I'm going to come up here, come up here five months later and go, oh, I left them lights on. They've been burning for five months. No. Turn the loft lights off. These lights go off too. All wired in the same circuit. And I got a nice piece of lightweight two inch thick styrofoam. Well, here's the gate I built for the elevator. It's got a gate latch on it, a couple of lawnmower idler pulleys, a little piece of angle iron, and another V idler at the bottom to guide it. And then a gate latch for safety. Safety first. So there's only a couple things left I need to do. And one of them is finish hooking this furnace up. I gotta vent it out the wall and I gotta run the gas line. Again, doing all this myself. I'm not hiring nobody to do it. That's pretty scary, Terrell, that you running gas line and hooking up a furnace. Yeah, I've done it before. Not a big deal. That's why that panel's missing. Because I want to have my gas shutoff valve in the wall at ground level, not up there. So in case there's a problem, I can shut the gas off down here. And then, of course, I'll wire in these last three boxes and this box here, that's got the switch in it, that'll be to turn the furnace on and off from down here. And then we're going to put a workbench over here for Junior. This is going to be Junior's corner for working on his bicycles. So we're going to fix up, this is the old workbench that was in the other building. I'm gonna get rid of this top. I'm gonna to put a nice, like for mica countertop, like you'd have in your kitchen on there. We're gonna put that along that wall. He's gonna have his own vice. We'll put a shelf under there. He can put all his bicycle tools and everything, and he can work out of that corner. So there you have it, grass rats. There's the update on the shop. Takes a long time when you're doing it yourself, running a business and making videos weekly. It takes time, because I'm a do-it-yourselfer. I like to do stuff myself, because I want it done my way, just like Frank Sinatra said. I'm finishing the inside of my pole barn my way. Remember that Frank Sinatra song? That's what he did. So if you like this uh, YouTube channel, 
I wish you would subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Follow me with the insides of your pole barns or your sheds or whatever you're called, shops. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Check out our web store. We got all kinds of stuff. Some of the stuff I mentioned, HV350, that glue is, is phenomenal, that adhesive. You may want to buy some of that. I use that stuff all the time, some other stuff. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Almost done with the shop. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, I got to insulate the ceiling, too, the attic. I got to do that. I didn't want to insulate it yet because I had to run all the electric up there. And I didn't want to be up there running electric in a bunch of insulation. So that'll be last. Plus, winter's coming. I can do the insulation anyway. There's your dinner.